team, welcome back for another. So today's video, I wanted to focus primarily on the anatomy of a climbing shoe. I want you to be able to reference back and understand the different jargon and words and whatnot that I'm actually using. So when I'm saying things like last, you'll understand what I'm talking about. If I'm saying rand, you'll know what I'm talking about. So I am going to split it up. I'm going to try and put um, timestamps for every single um, feature into my description so that you can easily reference back to it if you are watching um, one of my reviews. The next one will be on the Evolve Zenist. I'm still working on getting familiar with them, so the review will come sooner than later. But with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start, and I'm going to start with what I mentioned earlier, which is the Rand. Now, the Rand is going to be the rubber that is basically all of the top rubber of a shoe. Now, that is going to be the toe rubber that you can see here. That is going to be considered a Rand, and like I mentioned in my last video of the Shaman, oftentimes what companies are doing now is a variable of thick to soft so that you can get a little bit more give on the top so you're not hurting your toes and a little bit more thickness towards the front of the toe so we can increase longevity okay and then you're going to be coming back onto the sides of the rand these are going to be able to keep tension in the heel and keep shape of the shoe and then moving on to the bottom of the shoe the entire rubber of the bottom here is what we're gonna call our outsole. So the outsole is where um, you'll be hearing different things like this is a soft soled shoe or this is a stiff shoe. Um, and I am gonna be doing a video on the differences and the benefits of going with a soft or a stiff shoe. So tune in for that later. Next, we're gonna be talking about the midsole. Now the midsole, this is a full soled shoe, but of course mid, middle. Um, then you can see over here on my Drago, this is what we call a split midsole. And that's going to give you a lot more play. Split midsoles are typically going to be more advantageous towards someone who is bouldering or somebody who is sport climbing or somebody that just has much stronger feet, right? So being able to manipulate the shoe to toe down harder definitely is beneficial when you're climbing on overhangs and things as such. So if you're in the gym and you're a boulder specifically, or you like overhang sport climbing, a split midsole is great. Um, the full midsole definitely comes with more comfort. Um, if somebody doesn't have as strong as a foot yet, I would typically recommend you going into something with a full sole. Um, so that's why you'll notice with pretty much all beginner shoes, whether it's the tarantula lace, the momentum, or anything as such, they're always gonna be full. Um, and like I said, that's gonna be able to be more comfort when you're standing on things and just give you more support through your own foot itself. Next, since we pretty much hit the whole bottom here, we'll move to the top. Now, the top material here, you can get one of two things. You're going to either get synthetic or you're going to get leather. Now, there are benefits to both. Synthetic is great because obviously for those out there that are vegan friendly, um, synthetic is vegan friendly. Um, it does not breathe as well. So it tends to get a bit of a, a, bit of a whiff, right? Um, but with that being said, it does not stretch as much. So you can pretty much expect it at the most. You can get like a break in of about half a, about half a size. And then if you go to a more leather shoe, breathability, um, is much better. That's why they don't stink as much over time. Um, they're also going to last you longer. So a leather last or a leather shoe um, upper, sorry, will um, definitely have longer longevity than you're going to get with something synthetic. Um, but you can expect them to stretch quite a bit more. Depending on how much you downsize, you can end up stretching those things up to be about almost a full size larger than when you bought them. Um, and then next, since we're still here on the top, we'll talk about closure systems. So one, of course, you can go with lace-ups. You can go with, like you see here, the Velcro, which you can get anything from one to two to three straps. And then the last, unfortunately, I don't have one to show you, but that would be a slipper, which no Velcro, no laces. It is literally a slipper. Um, the downside of slippers is you want to downsize quite a bit because once those things start to break in, 
get a lot of expansion here and those things will be slipping on and off. But they are great for long days, training days, anything like that, because they tend to be a little more comfortable popping them on and off. Um, I will say for me, my indoor shoes are typically always going to be Velcro. It's just simple. It's easy. Take them off, take them off, put them on. Um, and then for my outdoor shoes, which was in my last review for the Shaman, um, these were a previous outdoor shoe of mine. These are the Sirius Unparallels. Um, these are basically the new version of the old Dragons by 510. Uh, phenomenal shoe, by the way, if you ever want me to do a review on these, I would love to. Um, but anyways, uh, I wear lace up outdoor primarily because I mentioned earlier that I do have a very narrow heel. So being able to kind of tighten it down where I need it and being able to have a little more versatility where I keep it tight, where I keep it loose, um, I prefer. So my outdoor shoes pretty much always going to be lace up. You do lose some toe rubber in most cases if you're going to go lace up because of course laces have to go a little bit further down, but they do make it easier to get on because I don't know if the opening's going to be a lot bigger. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to move on from there to the last. And the last is going to be the literal mold of the shoe. Now, every single shoe, whether it's your sneaker or your climbing shoe or anything, is all going to be molded around something. And that is what we consider the last. So that is why certain shoes will fit certain feet better. You'll get a lot of people that'll be like, oh, you definitely want this shoe. It is the best. I wear it all the time, blah, blah, blah. But let me just say, the best shoe for someone doesn't mean it's the best shoe for you. Um, so always keep that in mind just because you'll see a professional wearing a certain shoe doesn't mean it's the right shoe for you. So yeah, that's what you're gonna be getting with the last and then I'm just gonna talk a little bit more. So there's what we call the profile. So when you see on the side, you see a big downturn right here. That's an aggressive shoe. Beginner shoes, we typically will call a neutral. Um, Neutral one, much more comfortable. You're not gonna get as much volume here in the toes. So that is meant for you to be able to be more flat inside of your shoe, not knuckling up like you're gonna get aggressive. Pretty much all aggressive shoes across the board, you're gonna notice that volume in the toe box is much higher, and that is to accommodate for your toes curling and getting that knuckle up in the top here. Um, and then there's the moderate shoe, which is a great transition, right? So if you are ready to get more performance base and more performance out of your shoes from a beginner, of course, um, you will be moving on to something like, as an example, like the Scarpa Vapor, the Evolve Gashido. These are great shoes to transition into. If you want something a little more intermediate, you're not necessarily ready for the pain of like the Drago here or like a pair of solutions of, or anything as such. Um, and then of course, like I said earlier, aggressive, very downturn. Um, and then that's when like the symmetry of the shoe, you'll hear me say that often with a like asymmetric, basically what asymmetry is, is off center. Um, it's probably the best way I could explain that. And this is a great shoe to reference because this orange band right here shows you how asymmetric this is. If this shoe is going straight up the middle, it's weighed about right here. So very asymmetric. It definitely brings your feet more into a for performance so that it's going more towards your big toe, which is our power toe, which we're gonna be powering off of for the most part. So that's why when you're curling your toes, it's basically bringing all of your toes together to a single point right here. So we can be really driving and getting that power. And then the last thing I'm gonna talk about today is basically just the volume of a shoe. You're gonna hear it a lot. There's low volume and there's high volume. When I'm selling shoes, I try to gravitate away from saying men's and women's shoes because in most cases, really the only difference besides, of course, color is a high volume is typically a men's shoe and a low volume is typically a women's shoe. But that's not necessarily the case for everybody. Just because you're a man does not mean you have high volume feet. And just because you're a woman does not mean you have low volume feet. So you'll see a lot of people in competitions, men wearing women's shoes and women's wearing men's shoes and so on. So I think it's really important. And I try to express that to many that um it should just be low volume and high volume. And I think Evolve has done a really great job about that. They make a big post about it on their actual box for the climbing shoes. But yeah, so high volume is typically just somebody with a wider or a taller foot because really what we're talking about is the entire circumference of your foot. Just because you have a very low wide foot doesn't necessarily mean you're super high volume, but um, in most cases, a wider toe box does. So yeah, that's pretty much all I have for this one here. Make sure you stay tuned. I think my next video is probably gonna be 
like I said earlier, on the benefits of going with a soft shoe versus a stiff shoe and vice versa. Yeah, great. So thank you so much for coming back for another one.